Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Broadly speaking, uh, the maqasid of the Sharia, we look at three aspects. The masalih al-daruriyya, then the masalih al-hajiyya, and the masalih al-tahsiniyya. But our focus will be uh, on the daruriyya, but we'll just briefly uh, introduce each of these to us. Now, why I'm mentioning these is because often when you do a crash course, you go straight into the uh, to the principles, but you don't know where they fit in. So now we know that uh, masalih means the interests, the, the benefits and interests of the people, and daruriya is a necessity. So these are interests which are essential to the well-being of society. And these masalih, the singular which is maslaha, uh, the benefit and the goodness that comes from these, are referred to primarily as the kulliyat al-khams. Kulliyat uh, are the, the, the universal principles or general rules, which are five. Uh, and later scholars, we were taught that Imam al-Qarafi uh, was adamant about the sixth that he brought out from the fifth, which is aired honor of the human being and called it the sit, kulliya as-sit. So yeah, in where we are staying, we refer to it as the kulliyat asit, the five or six universal principles around which the fiqh and the deen of Islam revolves. So we are going to focus on this and uh, let's just look at what the masalih al-hajiyah is about. The hajiyah are, are needs from hajah a need. You know, you get salatul hajah where you have a pressing need and you perform a particular type of ibadah um, and ask Allah to fulfill your need to that. There are two types of salatul uh, of salah of hajjah. There's a salah and there's a dua. The dua you can make without wudu, the salah you need wudu. And uh, the dua is simply to utter continuously, Allahumma akhirli wa akhtarli. Allahumma akhirli wa akhtarli. Allah choose for me, choose the best for me. Uh, okay, then we also have salah of istikhara, where we have a need and we ask Allah to choose and guide us to the best choice. Nonetheless, hajaya refers to a need. And in this context, uh, it is based on a verse in the Quran, Surah Baqarah, verse 286, where Allah Ta'ala says, uh, nafsan illa wus'aha, or, And yuridu Allahu bikumul yusr, wa la yuridu bikumul usr. That Allah burdens no one beyond the capacity, and Allah's desire for us is ease. And we find a maximum principle called Raf al Haraj to remove difficulties. The deen is not here to make our lives difficult, especially in this day and time we are living in. And uh, this is something that uh, scholars who graduate from the Azhar and who sit before the, the Mashaykh of Sanad and Ijaz are these unbroken chains of transmission and have really studied and understand their communities, they know that the deen is based on removing difficulties. For it is far better to make things easier for people than to burden people so much that they leave the fold of Islam. And this is a huge responsibility and therefore we need to act with hikmah, with wisdom, with helm, with forbearance and with gentleness for these and primarily with rahmah because that is primarily what our prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is referred to in the quran rahmatan lil alameen an example here yeah, a need arises we are traveling so you get to make qasr salah or you cannot stand in your prayer for personal reasons you might have a backache you might be so exhausted after such amount of pressure at work that no one understands except you that you cannot sit. You understand you might faint and then you sit. So all these things are found under the hajiyat. Then we have the tahsiniya, the embellishments to adorn something, to beautify something. And uh, this is more, more for the morals of people that you dress accordingly where you go to. If you're going to a business meeting, you can't wear pajamas. Um, you, you, you don't have to go to a corporate business meeting about um, where you are doing, uh, for example, looking at the drainage and sewerage and building of buildings. 
and you go with a huge turban and, and things on, it's not a problem, but you dress accordingly. And likewise, if you go to a gathering of knowledge, you dress appropriately. So these are, 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 are both for the batin the, and the zahir, the inner and the outer. Purification and embellishing our hearts with quali good qualities like mercy, compassion, forgiveness, the samuh, tolerance, and also our clothing. Abu Hanifa was very strict on this. It, there's a narration where he comes across a learned man who is wearing a patched, broken garment. And he asks him, uh, why is your garment broken? And the man says, no, I'm practicing to be a Sufi. And he scolds the man out and he quotes a verse from the Quran and just um, to him and says, um, uh, I just uh, get to the, the verse now. Um, uh, uh, I'm sorry if I'm confusing the words, but you know what I mean? That uh, uh, for the, uh, the, the graces of Allah, فحدث, talk about it. Let people know without kibr, without arrogance. But uh, be uh, proud that Allah has blessed you and adorn yourself with that state of shukr. Um, that is what it's about.